I have come to the place in my story where I'm going to pull together the beginning, the middle, and the end. It was a Sunday, and uh, he hadn't worked the day before. The Saturday before, he had actually had that day off. And that night, we had went out, and we went for a ride, and uh, we met up with some of my friends and people that we were going to hang out with, and we'd had a nice evening, you know, um, we listened to some music, and just, you know, it was just like a date night type of thing, and there was nothing, you know, it, he had said nothing about this the, the whole evening, and um, so I think maybe sometime during the night he'd been getting text messages from her or something like that, but anyway, Sunday comes, and uh, he's He's got a car. While he was going to go do that that day, I was going to go and clean out my car and get a few of my items that I had that I wanted to bring on down there. Because, like I said, I've been moved in there now for about a month and a half close to it. I'm still kind of living out of their, my relative's home. I still have a lot of my stuff there. I had the bare minimum of things in his home, just clothing and stuff, but... I had brought in some of my personal belongings, and I uh, remember the love seat, and we're talking and taking a little break from working, and he says, um, if you wouldn't mind, because um, I had already told him that I was going to go and be gone for, you know, a while while he was gone, he said, if you wouldn't mind, um, stay gone a couple hours, give me a couple hours to deal with this, and uh, I'll text you when I'm ready for you to come back. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd, but, you know, I, I knew I was going to be gone for probably at least an hour to two hours. And uh, so I said, okay, you know, and I had put out some photographs of my son. Uh, this man had a, so I go on ahead, he gets he gets the truck loaded, and he, he goes to leave to go take this stuff to them. So about an hour goes by, and I'm, you know, it's getting up in the day, and I'm ready to go home, and, you know, I want to go home, take a shower, and fix me a bite to eat, and settle in for the, the day I had to work the next morning. So finally he texts me, and he said, where was, you, where was I at? And I told him, and he said, well, come on home. So I go home, and uh, I can tell as soon as I walk in the door that his demeanor is different. His, there's just a vibe. There's a feeling. There's something that's just different. It's like a feeling in the air, like a like an energy. And I'm putting the groceries and things away, so I'm pretty much staying back in the kitchen at this time. And when I walk into the living room, I notice that my son's photographs, my dad's, all my all my stuff is gone out of the living room. My um, binder and my laptop and things like that, they're all gone. And he says nothing. He's sitting there looking at his phone, and um, and I'm just waiting to see if he offers up an explanation, and he says nothing. So I turn, and I go, and I walk into the bedroom, and I go through the bedroom into the bathroom, and at the foot of the bed, I had kept my cedar chest, and I noticed when I came back out that there's a comforter folded up on, on the cedar chest, and in between... Uh, underneath the comforter are my belongings, my laptop, my photographs. It's all it's all kind of like between the cedar chest and the comforter. So I walk into the living room, and I sit down, and uh, he sits there a few minutes. He says nothing. Then he gets up. He walks into the bedroom. He gets these things, brings them back, puts the photographs back where they had been as though I hadn't noticed. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, why did you uh, take those out? So he starts telling me this story about how, now keep in mind that up until this point, I'm under the impression that I've been told by this man that this woman, this ex, is well aware of me and him, that she's well aware that I've been staying there. Um, I mean, I've been living there now for over a month. And that's my, my belief that she knew about it. So he starts telling a completely different story. He says when he goes there, that he starts telling her that uh, he's that I'm 
staying there with him, that I'm moving in there with him. He's he's presenting it as though he's telling her that I am moving in. He doesn't say this woman's been living with me for a month or longer now. Um, take it from him or or you know something. It's got something to do with him. It has nothing to do with me. It's all about how this is going to affect him. So he's telling me that she she finds out about me and him. She gets really angry. She starts making threats. And I ask him, well, I thought she already knew about me and you. I thought you'd already talked to her about this. So he's stumbling over his words. He really doesn't know where to go at this point because I guess he forgot. He couldn't keep his lies straight. So he comes in and gets in the shower with me. And we're in there taking a shower together. And he's hugging on me and kissing on me and everything. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm confused. I'm like, one minute ago, he's like taking my son's photographs out of the living room and hiding them. And now he's in there in the shower with me acting as though nothing's happened. He doesn't want to talk about it. But then after we shower and the rest of the evening goes on, he says, um, you know, I, I I think maybe it might be for the best if you uh, go and uh, go back and stay with your family for a while. He said, I'm really, I'm really worried about the way she was behaving today and some of the things that she said. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid for you to stay here by yourself at night until this all blows over. He says, she's making threats. She's threatening to come down here and burn this house down with you in it. And he says, I, I don't know. He said, I didn't want to tell you that. He said, but if I, if I don't tell you that and you stay here alone at night and that something bad happened to you, you know, I'd feel responsible. I'm listening to this story and I'm thinking this sounds like something straight out of a, a, a soap opera from, you know, some nighttime soap opera. And, um. So we go back, and the rest of the evening goes on. He's pretty much ghosting me right there in the house. He's he's barely speaking to me. You know, he's paying very little attention to me. When I do try to talk to him, it's just one... He, he's gray-rocking me. You know what I mean? If you know about narcissism, it's like one-word answers, uh, uh, avoiding answering me, ignoring me. I get up, and I go get my photographs and things and um, and all my stuff that he had brought back and I pack them back into the bedroom. I'm putting everything into a suitcase. He comes in, what are you doing? He's acting all surprised and shocked. What are you doing? Why are you putting those things away? I told him, I said, you, you're basically pretty much giving me the, the uh, opinion or the idea that I'm no longer wanted here, and I shouldn't be here. This is not my home, and and I'm basically I'm like I don't even, I'm I'm so confused, you know. I don't even know. I'm thinking, where am I going to go? I've been I've spent the day at these people's homes, at this at my relative's home, cleaning out the rest of my belongings, and uh, a lot of them are in my car. Things I was going to bring down there, and. He's like, well, I didn't tell you that you had to leave. I don't want you to take your things out. And he's just like back and forth. And it's like, it's like, I don't, he's hugging and kissing on me. Let's lay down and let's calm down and let's not make no decisions. And, and, if, and just minutes earlier, he's telling me, you know, it might be better for me not to stay there. And I'm thinking, well, does he think I'm going to leave my belongings here? And uh, have them destroyed, <laughs> and uh, I'm just confused, and I'm I'm just I'm like pissed off, and I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do at this point, and I realize I realize that the atmosphere that I felt when I came back that day, I, I realized what it was. It was the shift. It was the the um, shift in the atmosphere. You know, I could just feel it. I could just feel it. And I just knew that something had taken place that day. I don't I don't know that it was um, what he said, the threats and that. It, there could have been some threats. 
because as I will describe in my next couple of videos, there were some, um, you know, there was a near clash between me and this woman. And there were some threats made against me later. But he's given me this story of how he's trying to protect me from this woman and protect me from, you know, basically he's saying she's threatening to come down there and murder me in the middle of the night while I'm asleep and she's going to set the house on fire. And, you know, that's his story. Well, my, what I should have done that very day, that very next morning, is I should have gone to the cops and I should have told them this story and let it all been brought out. And I should have said, you know, if I'm being threatened in my home where I'm living and been paying the bills for the last month, if I'm being threatened by someone that they're going to come to my home and burn me up in the middle of the night, I should have gotten a restraining order and a protective order against this woman. And if that had turned out to be a lie, then it would have come out. But I didn't. The next day, I, I stayed that night, and I stayed the next night. And I'm getting, like, conflicting. You know, um, one minute, it's, I think everything will be okay. Don't, you know, don't worry. We'll figure this out. And the next minute, it's like, yeah, I think maybe you should just go on back there and stay with them. And I and I'm now I know now after I've researched and read about narcissism and go look it up on YouTube or or on the internet about how the narcissist will destroy the holidays. They and this man had been talking all week about cooking this big Thanksgiving dinner. And what are you going to cook a big Thanksgiving dinner? And for who? Me and him? He had no friends. He, none of his family come around him. So I guess he thought I was going to do all the cooking and, and all this on my day off from work. And I had no intentions of that. I had already been invited to come and spend Thanksgiving with my relatives. And, uh, and you know, none of that worked out. Nothing, none of that happened. And I will talk about that more. But I just wanted to pull this all together and how how it went from like that Sunday to that um, probably Wednesday or Thursday. Well, see, my, my dates get confused right here because I was in a brain fog for about six or eight weeks. Um, I was being gaslighted, you know, him taking my pictures and then bringing them back and then, um, you know... And, and I'll get more in-depth about what he ended up doing with some of my belongings and how that affected me. But over the next two two nights, I stayed there. And on the third night is when, uh, the third morning is when all this finally kind of came to a head. And um, I just wanted to, you know, make this video to pull this all together. And I'll continue my story in my next video and then I'm gonna wrap it all up and I appreciate anyone out there who listens and I just hope that if you see these signals if you are being you know given mixed signals and mystery and uh, misled uh, or, or and if someone tells you that someone else is threatening your life do not sweep that under the rug do not let them say that they're gonna protect you you go get real protection. You go get a police officer. You go talk to someone at the court. Because if they're not, if this person is making this story up, then that other person has a right to know that as well. And if that other person is threatening you, then you have a right to protect yourself. This is not, this is not uh, street justice or what's it called, um, this is, uh, you know, America, and we have a right to protect ourselves and be protected from people who want to cause us harm. And I believe, in my opinion, to this day that, uh, you know, I, I feel very lucky that it didn't get worse. And I feel very lucky that I got away from these people. 